What's up, guys? Joe with Odyssey Off Road. Thanks for uh, clicking on the video, checking out the, uh, this one here, um, and visiting the channel. I just want to thank everybody first and foremost before the video starts for the overwhelming support the channel has gotten recently. Uh, we're over 5,000 subs. Um, I just want to thank all you guys. Greatly, greatly appreciate uh, helping the channel grow. And um, you guys smashing the thumbs up button on the videos and commenting and sharing the videos really helps a lot. So, so I thank you all. I appreciate that. And uh, so on to the review here. So you will see we got 881 miles on the button. And I think that is about uh, 48 engine hours. 45.8 engine hours. So that's it with that. Um, I will say this is probably going to be a boring review in terms of um, things failing on it because I haven't had anything go wrong with it. I will just I will say though that there is a little slop in the front steering. Um, these things aren't the tightest of steering front ends. Um, as compared to a Renegade, right out of the box. Um, right out of the box, the Renegade versus the Polaris. I think it's true, all the Polaris. Um, they just have a sloppier front end. There's, there's some play in the parts. Um, and that has increased with the mileage that I have on it now. So what I did to correct most of it was the steering stem brace from J Parts. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but it is down there. You see it right there. The factory steering stem brace is just a clamp with a piece of plastic. Uh, that is billet, um, greasable. It's awesome, awesome piece. And it tightened up the steering stem big time. You used to be able to move the steering, even new, like a little bit, just if you went like that with the bars. When you were out on the, on the trail, uh, going over terrain, uh, especially like going downhill and stuff, you'd feel it move. Um, as it got more mileage on it, it was probably over an eighth of an inch of play. So if you took the steering stem and moved it like that in the bushing down there, it'd be about an eighth inch of play. With this one, there's zero play, nothing. It's better than factory. So that eliminated all that. The other place where there's a little bit of play, and it's a common area for these, is uh, so you have a unique steering uh, set up on these to avoid, to kind of eliminate, help eliminate bump steer where the suspension travels up and down and um, the tires don't deflect. So basically... They added this middle section here, and there's an extra piece in between the two tie rods. This part here is where the play is. If you move the steering stem and you go like that, um, you can feel it. If you put your hands on everything, you can feel the plays in here. It's in that piece. J Parts also makes a replacement for that um, that will eliminate that. Other than that, there is nothing. The machine's held up great. Um, I haven't had any issues at all. The factory tires even have been great. I rotated them once. These are the ones that were on the back the whole entire time. I just rotated them. So these were the rears with all those miles. And you'll see there's plenty of life left. You can almost still see the little indent marks in the middle uh, and the center ribs. So they're holding up really good. And they're, they've been pretty good in almost all terrains that I've ridden them in. Rocks, sands, uh, loose stuff, um, hard pack, everything. On the hard pack, they do howl quite a bit. Just because the spacing of the lugs is so big, um, you're going to get noise. It's like road noise with your vehicle. If you have big mud terrains on your truck, you're on a pavement, and you're going to get some howling. It's kind of like that when you get on hard pack with that. And soft stuff, you don't hear it. Um, in terms of upgrades, I haven't done anything else to the unit. I mean, I have the storage box from Polaris, the OGO storage. It's off right now because I just washed it. Um, and other than that, I haven't done anything to it. Nothing at all. The suspension settings are pretty good. They're bad. I have them at factory settings, uh, what it says in the book. And then I think I backed off. Um, I think I, I'm sorry. I think I stiff. I, what I did was I, I set it to the factory settings in the book, the recommended settings, which is almost full soft. Um, and it was fine that way. But I did increase the high speed compression, which is the outer red knob, um, two clicks, uh, front and rear. And that, to me, helped a lot. So um, just on the big stuff, so it wasn't so squishy. Um, but the suspension is never bottomed out. It's never not reacted in a, in a good way. The suspension on this thing has really been second to none in terms of 
compared comparison to any other ATV I've ever ridden. And obviously, you know, we have the Renegade, I have a Raptor 700, 350, the Honda 250s. I've ridden multitude of machines, uh, four by four machines. We had a Grizzly. Um, I've ridden them all pretty much. And there is nothing on the market that has suspension like this, nothing. Uh, absolutely nothing. It's li it's like sitting in a side-by-side, -side, but you're riding it and it's got, um, it's got handlebars. It's almost cheating. You know, as my friend uh, Pete says, um, Pete Hager, you guys know him. He had, he had one of these as a loaner from Polaris and he said, it's almost like a cheat code. Like you have so much confidence on this machine to do and tackle any terrain. It's almost not even fair. Um, it really takes a lot of the driver skill out of it. And that could be good and bad. Depends on what you're looking to do. Um, I will tell you, I haven't used it as much as I had when I first got it. L large part of that is due to the heat. It's just, it's hot right now in Arizona. It's not riding season where most of the country riding season summer. Here's kind of the opposite. We don't ride much in the summer because it's 110 degrees. Unless you go out early, early morning, which I'm not really an early, early riser. Um, if on my days off. So, and, but, and then, um, you can go out in the evening, like after dinner, like six thirty, six o'clock, ride for an hour or two till sunset. Or if you like night rides, it it cools off and you can tolerate and ride. Other than that, it's just impossible. So that's it. Machine is bone stock, no issues. Um, for the price tag, man, it, if you want a machine that you can just hit any terrain, have one do it all machine, um, and you're not really into shifting or anything like that, and you just want, and you got a bad back, say you're older, you want a machine that's going to really take care of your body. This is it. This thing is unbelievable. Um, it, it's just crazy. I, I can't imagine it getting any better from here, suspension wise on an ATV. It's just, just virtually impossible. I don't see where you can go from here. 55 inches wide. It's got 14 inches suspension travel. It's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, so in that term, terms of that, I absolutely love the machine. It's beautiful looking machine too. The blue, I think this is the nicest color scheme. The new ones, um, the 24s are all, are more like the opposite color scheme as this. It's like all that high vis yellow with some red A-arms. I like personally, I like the blue. So this looks good to me. Um, I like this color scheme. And then the early ones were like black and red which I'm not a fan of black plastics just because they get scuffed up and scratched and show everything really easy. So um, I would say if you're looking to buy one of these and you're on the fence about the price, I totally get it. That's a big nut to swallow. Um, you can get a Renegade for a few thousand dollars cheaper and do everything really this can do, but this one's going to crawl rocks better if you're doing like gnarly rock crawls, deep ruts, hill climbs, stuff like that. This is going to be better in that terms. Because it's got more suspension and articulation. But if you're just doing fast, tight wooded trails, um, you want to save a couple grand, buy yourself the Renegade. I would say the Renegade holds up a little better. Um, bushings and stuff like that. This, my wife's Renegade here has got 13,000, I'm sorry, 1,300 miles on it. So, you know, it's got 500 miles more than this Polaris. And everything's tight as the day we bought it on this. Nothing's worn out. Um, there's no play in the steering, no play in the suspension. Everything's tight. Uh, the Polaris, obviously, as we discussed in the beginning, there was a little bit of wear already. Um, and I don't beat the hell out of it. As you can see, the machine is really clean. I took this machine and the Raptor to the Badlands. And I was having so much fun on the Raptor. I did not even ride this thing, sat there the whole time. I brought it home dirty because it just sat outside and it got dusty. So I gave it a nice bath yesterday. And uh, so that leads me to my conclusion. Um, this machine is sold. I'm getting rid of it. So this is the last video you will see with this Polaris Scrambler. And um, there is um, not a lot of guys that are making content on these videos, and I get it. There is one other guy, if you guys are looking for content um, on these machines, he posts pretty regularly. It's uh, Letter Rip Adventures, uh, or, or used Letter Rip ATV Adventures on YouTube. Um, check out his channel. He, I'll actually le I'll link his channel in the video description. And... Um, you guys can check his channel out if you're looking for more Polaris uh, Scrambler content. and um, But you won't get be getting any more here, unfortunately, because this machine is gone. Um, we were picking up a, a new ATV today. This machine is sold, and the Raptor is sold. So you'll have to, you guys will have to tune into the next video to see what we got. We got one new machine to replace them both. 
Uh, and what that is, well, I'll let you guys guess in the comments. But that video will be posted next after this one uploads. So in terms of fuel mileage, I will just add, um, because we do a lot of far, like big rides. Um, my wife and I were with the 4x4s up through the mountains and everything. And we, I usually go, we, I can get 80 to 90 miles out of a tank. Um, that's the most I've stretched. And I've gotten home with the fuel on like the last bar with that. Now, you're going to have to conserve part of your ride. You can't just be hammering on it and expect to get that kind of fuel mileage. You probably cut it in half if you're hammering on it the whole time. But, you know, we, if you take it, we do is we take it conservative up to, up through the desert trails and up to the mountains. Then we get up to the mountains and we do some exploratory riding up there. And we, we romp on them a little bit up there and then, you know, kind of take it easy back to conserve the fuel in that way. And you can get quite a bit of distance out of, a, out of the fuel uh, range on the machine if you drive it semi-conservatively. If you're hammering on it, I will tell you it'll you can almost hear it drinking. It'll it'll suck the fuel down. And that's what to be expected. It's thousand cc, same as the Renegade. It's gonna drink fuel. I would say uh as far as MPGs go, we we've both gone on a trip, uh fueled up at a gas station, you know, after about 60, 70 miles and um to ride back because we're doing, you know, on days where we're doing really big rides. And they both take about the same amount of fuel. Um, if anything, the Renegade's a little bit better on, on fuel, which is crazy because it's got more power. But I think it's just the machine's a little bit lighter. Uh, it's clutched a little differently. This thing is 900-something pounds. So it's going to drink if you're going to get on it. If you're going to ride it conservatively, it'll be all right. You guys got any questions about this machine um, that you, I haven't answered in the video or previous videos? Check out the previous videos I've done on this machine. Um, I will gladly answer them. Just leave the comment below. But that's it for this one. Kind of want to throw that out there. Everything's holding up well on the machine other than those steering components I showed you. The paint is good. Um, the, the factory headlights are eh. They're just, you know, incandescent bulbs. Um, but this light bar is awesome. I've gotten, been out coming back in like dusk and almost dark. And the light bar was more than enough to light up the whole trail. So that's it for this one, guys. Smash that thumbs up button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to check out what's uh, coming next on the channel. And uh, what ATV we got to replace the two machines, the two, the two uh, quads. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. This is Joe with Odyssey Off-Road. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And we'll catch you guys out on the next one.